Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about reinforcement detailing of beams according to the Euro code. Detailing methods, detailing requirements will be discussed today. Maximum reinforcement area, minimum reinforcement area, reinforcement by spacing, all those related to the beam reinforcement are going to discuss today. Let's start the discussion. Minimum area of reinforcement. When you design a beam, you find the reinforcement requirement, that is the design requirement. As a detailing requirement, there are minimum maximum reinforcement requirement. Minimum reinforcement requirement we discuss for the tension, compression and transverse reinforcement. The tension reinforcement requirement as you can see in this equation, here this equation you, know, you can see the A's minimum is the minimum reinforcement requirement and the, it is it should be greater than 0.26 into your CTM divided by YK into DED. It, and also that that is that should be greater than 0 0.013 BD. Here this FCTM is the tensile strength of the concrete that can be obtained from the table 3.1 of the Euro code 2. If YK is the yield strength of the reinforcement and BT is the width of the section and D is the effective depth. So you can calculate this requirement easily and we should make sure that is greater than 0 0.013 PD. With that, you can compare this value with the reinforcement requirement you calculated for the bending. Then, uh, whatever the greater you can provide in the section. When it comes to the compression reinforcement requirement, that should be greater than 0 0.002 AC. Here, the AC is the cross section area of the section. So, this cross section area you have to consider. So, that is quite simple and uh, you can easily calculate the compression reinforcement requirement. If you happen to design the beam as a double reinforcement section, then if you found the compression reinforcement, you have to check whether it should be greater than this or whatever greater you have to provide in the section. Transverse reinforcement requirement. There is a minimum requirement for that. When you design a beam as a flange beam, in such a cases, you have to provide the minimum reinforcement in the flange. So that can be obtained from 0 0.0015 HF into L. Here the HF is the flange thickness and L is the span of the beam. From this equation, you can find the reinforcement requirement to the flange. So if we consider in the flange B here, you can find the minimum, minimum reinforcement requirement. Then let's move on to the reinforcement bar spacing. When you discuss about the reinforcement bar spacing, we consider the maximum bar spacing and minimum bar spacing. So let's see what are the detailing requirements in beams. There are basic requirements when you discuss in the tension, before discussing the tension and compression reinforcement. Considering the construction requirements, we maintain the gap between two longitudinal reinforcement bars as 75 mm allowing the poker vibrator to pour place into the beam. Otherwise, there won't be adequate gap if we reduce the reinforcement bar spacing. When you have a two pass or pair of pass or bundle pass, in such cases, we maintain the gap is around 100 mm. So, this is kind of a construction requirement that we need to maintain. There, there was a requirement like uh, aggregate size plus 5 millimeter but here when it come to the euro code the in the standard method of detailing of reinforcements they have suggested to consider 75 millimeter and 100 millimeter for two different cases maximum bar spacing for tension reinforcement this depend on the reinforcement by spacing and the crack width that we consider. As you can see here in this table, depending on the reinforcement by spacing, the stress here, the so stress is there and the crack width is mentioned here. So depending on the design crack width, the maximum tension by spacing is determined. For example, if you say, if you consider 320, when, you, when the crack width becomes 0.4, you have to consider 150. When it becomes 0.3, you have to consider 100 millimeter. So this is the requirement that we need to consider. So the, in a section, generally the surface stress would be around 
310. So for this stress you can determine the reinforcement by spacing depending on your design pattern that you have to follow. Maximum bar spacing in compression bars. According to the detailing rules, that should be less than 300 mm. So, compression if we have a compression bars, that should be less than 300 mm. All the compression bars shall be restrained if this gap within 150 mm. That you have to provide. That means you have to provide the links. When the compression bar is further than 150 mm from the restraint bar, then you have to provide the links. That you have to keep in mind. This is a special thing. We will discuss this further when it comes to the reinforcement links. Right. Beam side reinforcements. You have to fire, provide the side reinforcement in beams to control the cracking. According to the Euro code, the height should be greater than 1000 millimeters to provide the side reinforcement. For British standards, that is BS8110, there it was 75 millimeters. Sorry, it was 750 millimeters. When, when the beam depth is greater than 750 millimeters, according to the BS, we have to provide the side reinforcement. In Euro code, that's become 1000 millimeters. And also, we have to provide the tension reinforcement between the neutral axis and the tension phase that you have to keep in mind. So upper part or the tension phase to neutral axis you have to provide the tension reinforcement. Generally it looks like half the section you have to provide the tension reinforcement whereas in the BS that is two third of the section. And as an example, when you have a 60 mm bars as a side reinforcement, the spacing should be less than or equal 250 mm. Right now, you can calculate this requirement from the Euro code 2. You may refer the section 733 of part 3 of Euro code 2 to calculate this. This section 7. 0.3.3 indicate the method of calculating beam side reinforcement. Now let's look at the minimum reinforcement requirement or the maximum reinforcement requirement and spacing of shear links. There are special requirements for the shear links in the beams. Minimum requirement ASW divided by SB into BW shall be greater than 0.085%. That is this is the minimum reinforcement requirement. Here the cross section area is the AS, ASW. That is, depending on the number of legs, you have to consider the cross section area. For example, if you have two legs, you have to consider that. So, so if you have a link like this, so you have to consider this cross section area. Say cross section area is here is A, here is A. So ASW is twice a now if we have a three legs we have to multiply by three right so that you have to consider b is the average width of the section space thing is s so that should be plus than 15 times 2 main compression bar diameter the preferred minimum link diameter is 8 millimeters that is a suggestion from the standard method of detailing so you may consider the preferred minimum link diameter as 8 mm when you do the detailing of reinforcement. Link minimum spacing. The minimum spacing of the link should be calculated as 100 mm or 50 plus 12.5 into number of legs, whichever greater. This you have to consider that calculating the minimum link spacing. Maximum link spacing you may consider as 300 mm or 0.75 d as given in the British standard or 12 times the bar diameter of the compression bar whichever is least so that you have to consider as the maximum spacing maximum lateral pitch that is something difficult to understand but let's see what is this maximum lateral pitch should be 600 millimeter or 0.75 d 
So as you can see here in this figure, the it's indicate the maximum lateral pitch. The as we discussed previously, the spacing between longitudinal is reinforced bar also. I have indicated here when the when you have a longitudinal bar greater than 150 millimeter, then you have to restrict. So if this is spacing is less than, we need to we need not to provide the link. And also the lateral pitch is this distance. So distance between this link to this link we can consider as 604.75 d. That you should maintain less than that. So that also very important when you do in the detailing because when you have a very far away bars that will be an issue. There are special things we have to consider when you are doing the reinforcement detailing of beams and its links. So as you can see here, this requirement we have to follow when you are doing the reinforcement detailing. These are the correct practices when you have a main link there, we have to provide this link like this internal link. Or if you have two internal links, we can provide the main link like this and two links like this. But you have to maintain this spacing requirement according to the detailing methods. If you have a two links, you can couple like this or the bundle like this. But you should not provide the links like this because they are clashing. You can see here, one link go like this, other one go like this, it will be an issue. So therefore, you don't provide links in this panel, you better provide the links as indicated in these diagrams. With that, we are going to conclude today's session. We today discuss about beam reinforcement detailing requirements, spacings and the reinforcement minimum and maximum requirements. Let's meet again from the video. Thank you very much for watching our videos.